Hi everyone, welcome to a new video here on my channel. Today I will be showing you a simple method that can help you draw different fashion figure poses for your fashion illustrations. In this video, I just want to note that I will be using the nine head technique as a way for me to draw my fashion figure. So if you don't know what the nine head technique is and you want to learn more about it, then I highly suggest that you watch the video that I have uploaded on my channel regarding this topic. It goes into detail as to how I use that technique to draw my fashion figure. I will link that video in the card section of this video and also in the description box below. Like I said, I highly recommend that you watch that before watching this video. But if you already know the fundamentals of creating a fashion figure, specifically using the nine head technique, then let's get started. In this video, I will be showing you how to draw the fashion figure in a relaxed pose. In particular, the contrapposto, which is a pose with most of the body weight on one foot so that the shoulders twist off the axis opposite from the hips. So take note of that. The shoulders twist off the axis opposite from the hips. So let's get straight into it. Right here, as you can see, I have a paper with horizontal lines drawn out to help me draw the fashion figure in the most ideal fashion proportions, which is normally the human figure, but just with longer legs. I'm going to start drawing a vertical line that starts from the neckline, which is one third down head number two. So this line extends all the way down to the bottom of the feet, which is line 10. And we call this line the balance line. And this will act as a center axis for our other guidelines. This also helps keep our figure and pose balanced, meaning that the pose can be done by a person, but also that person is able to hold the pose for a long period of time without losing balance, hence the name balance line. The next guideline that I draw is what we call the S-curve. So this line also starts from the neckline and the tip of the balance line, so just in that intersection. And then it has a turning point on the intersection between the hip line and the balance line, and it then finishes down to the intersection between line 10 and the bottom of the balance line. And it actually looks like the letter S. However, you can also draw this as a reverse S, depending on the pose that you want to create. But this guideline or this curve is basically what the term contraposto is all about because the curve of the upper body counters the curve of the lower body just like the letter S. And this guideline will also be helping us determine the curve of the torso, which is normally from the shoulders to the hips. And that actually will lead us to the next set of guidelines. When it comes to drawing the width of the body, I like to use a 1 is to 1.5 ratio. What that means is if I have drawn the head as 1 inch tall, then the width of the shoulders will be 1.5 inches wide. And if I decide to draw the head to be bigger than 1 inch tall, such as, for example, it'll be 2 inches tall, then we do the math and calculate that the width of the shoulders will be 1.5 times 2, meaning it will be 3 inches wide in total. And I will use that measurement as a guide for the shoulder line, the apex line, the waistline, and the hip line, which are all part of the torso. And these lines are actually going to be called action lines, and they come in pairs. So, the shoulder line is paired with the apex line, and these two lines always stay parallel to each other. Then there's also the waistline and the hip line as their own pair, and they also stay parallel to each other. And why I say that is because the way action lines work is that they rotate along the balance line. And the rule is that the top pair of action lines will always rotate in the opposite direction of the bottom pair of action lines. 
and the way that they rotate is determined by the direction of the S-curve. Like I said, you can draw the S-curve as a regular S or you can flip it and reverse it. So a good way to remember this is the side of the torso that the S-curve is located on is the side where the torso extends. So if the S-curve is located on the right side of the torso, then the torso extends on the right side as well. From here, we now have mu, shoulder, apex, waist, and hip lines, which are represented in yellow. So these are the new guidelines that we will be using when drawing the figure in motion. And we can also start by adding a center line to the torso, just so it can help us later on with symmetry. And once we have drawn all of these lines, then we can start drawing the body parts. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. And I do wanna thank Skillshare for making yet another video possible. And I'm sure you guys already know what Skillshare is, but if you don't, Skillshare is a really great online resource that you can use because they have a wide range of video classes taught by professionals and creatives. So if you're looking to learn something, improve your skills, Skillshare is definitely the place to go. And more specifically, if you're looking to learn how to draw fashion illustrations, Skillshare actually has a bunch of classes just for you. And one that I would actually recommend is from one of my favorite fashion illustrators, and the fashion illustrator that definitely inspired me to get started, Katie Rogers. So she has a class on Skillshare called Paper Fashion, Telling a Story Through Fashion Illustration. And I hope that when you watch this class, her style will inspire you just as much as she inspired me to get started on fashion illustration. However, the best part about Skillshare is that they offer more classes, so many classes on different topics, not just fashion illustration. So if you're also interested in learning photography, design, business, lifestyle, productivity, so much more, then I highly, highly recommend that you check out Skillshare. I actually have a special link in the description box where the first 1,000 people to sign up using that link will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. That gives you unlimited video content that's normally valued at less than 10 US dollars a month if you pay annually, which is still a pretty good deal even after your trial expires. So I highly recommend you guys to take advantage of this offer. Check out the links in the description box for other resources on how to draw fashion illustrations. I always start with the head. And for this one, we're just going to draw the head straight on. I'm not going to make it twist or turn in any way because I want um, us to focus more on the torso and how it actually changed with the new um, action lines. So I like to start by drawing the body parts as either straight lines or circles for joints. Um, that just helps me map out the body. And starting with the upper half of the body, I make sure to follow the action lines, but also still maintaining, you know, the general proportions of the body. For example, the waist is generally smaller than the shoulders or the hips. So I make sure that when I'm connecting the shoulder line down to the hip line, it goes inwards um, to kind of show or try and define that area. And once I'm happy with the boxes and the circles, then I go ahead and I actually add some details and I also soften those curves. And that's why I like to start off with straight lines and circles because then I don't end up committing to those lines just yet until I am happy with them. The next thing that I draw is the support leg. And this leg is located on the side where the S curve is on the bottom half of the body. So for this demonstration, the S curve finishes on the right side of the balance line. So the right leg becomes the support leg, meaning it carries most of the body weight. That means that when you choose a position for the leg, I actually have two tips. One, 
place it closer to the balance line to keep the figure looking balanced and realistic. And two, also make sure to keep the support leg straight. The reason why I say that is actually more from observation than it is an actual rule. And I would highly recommend that you also try and make observations from either real life or reference images. If possible, take a reference image um, of a relaxed pose or a contrapposto pose. Draw where the balance line is from the neckline down. Try to identify the S curve and also identify the rotation of the shoulder and the hips. And then see where the support leg is in relation to the balance line. Normally, it is closer to the balance line than the other leg. And most of the time, I'm pretty sure all of the time, it is also straight. So for my drawing, I have decided to simply follow the curve of the letter S for the support leg, but I'm trying to make it not so dramatic because we're keeping it grounded on reality. And to help me draw the leg, I draw circles for the knees and then smaller circles for the ankles. And then I connect those with straight lines. And once I am happy with how that leg looks, I then add the details and I soften the curves of the thigh, the calf and the feet. And basically we have created our support leg. And once you've drawn this, you have drawn all of the parts of the body that need to adhere to the guidelines, meaning the rest of the arms and leg that we are going to draw from here on out, we can change their positions to whatever that we want in order to suit the pose that we want to draw. Let's first start with the arms. The guidelines for the arms also shift um, in a moving pose, firstly because the arms are connected to the shoulder line. Therefore, if the shoulder shifts, so too do the arms. So basically, I just copy the angle of the shoulder line and rotate the lines for the elbows, the wrists, and the hand. Once that's done, I draw circles for the joints and then I connect them. And once I'm happy with the pose, then I soften the lines and um, add in the details. However, if you want to completely change the position of the arm, such as, for example, putting the arms on the waist, all you have to do is take note of the distance between the shoulder line and the elbow line. And that distance is actually one and a half head. The upper arm rotates from the shoulder line. So simply rotate that line at a 1.5 head radius and that becomes your new elbow line. And all you gotta do is draw the circles for the joints, connect that elbow to the wrist which falls on the waist and then draw the hands. And if you actually want a detailed tutorial on how to draw hands, I do have a video on that in my channel. So I will also link that in the description box down below. Now for the legs, um, you can draw the legs extended or bent basically the same way we did for the arms by taking the measurement from the crotch to the knee or from the knee to the ankle and then kind of just rotating that. Um, using that measurement as its radius and repositioning those body parts. However, for this demonstration, I personally like to use an extended leg just because it's a better looking pose, but it's completely up to you what pose you want to create. I would highly recommend using reference images to help you draw a relaxed fashion pose. That way you are able to take note of all of the common poses, uh, how the legs move, how the arms move, how the torso moves in a relaxed standing pose. When it comes to this kind of pose, there isn't actually a lot of variations, but it is a good starting point because drawing poses can be quite intimidating, especially the more complicated it gets. So I feel that this is a good um, uh, starting point or a foundation. And then from here, you can move into more advanced techniques. And like I said, if you are keen to see more tutorials on advanced poses, comment down below and also 
feel free to vote on my polls, which I um, post on my channel. So that way your tutorial request might just be the next one that I make. And with that said, I will end today's video. I hope that you found this information useful. If you try this method, please tag me. I would love to see it. And thank you so much for watching this video. Please leave a comment, like, and subscribe. Share this video as well to fellow artists and fashion illustrators. I wish you the best of luck with your art journey, and I will see you in my next one.